it's not every day that we hear about mass disappearances. Over the years, however, some of these have been documented. Each mass disappearance brings a lot of mystery, tragedy, and curiosity. There are many civilizations, villages, and people who've been missing for a long time. Some have been missing for centuries, and we still have no information to understand how it all happened. Migration and sacrifice are often one of the reasons people disappear, but some of these cultures have disappeared without leaving a single trace behind. No one knows whether their lives were taken away, or whether they were just left on their own. There are many theories connecting all of this to the paranormal, but there is no proof to back this up. Some of these civilizations were knowledgeable, with some even possessing great knowledge and skill. As one of the most famous incidents in North American history, the mysterious village of Anjikuni has much speculation over the years. The lake is located along the Kazan River in Canada, this area is known for legends of malicious wood spirits and even beasts such as the Wendigo. One of the most thought-provoking tales is also the one surrounding the disappearance of the villagers who once lived on the coast of Anjakuni's waters. It was November 1930, and a Canadian fur trapper Joe LaBelle was looking for a place to warm up and stay the night. He decided to visit an Inuit village located on the rocky shores of the Lake Anjakuni. He visited this area before and according to his story, the area was bustling with tents, huts, and friendly locals. After arriving in the village, he realized it was pretty empty. There were no people or dogs barking as usual. There was not a single sign of life in the village. It's extremely difficult to imagine what made all of these people leave the safety of their homes, food, tools, and dogs. There were no signs of any struggle and no indications of any violence in the area. Many researchers over the years have tried to find logical explanations about this event. If the lives of the Inuits of the Anjakuni were really taken away by force, there would be some indication left behind. These were approximately 30 men, children, and women. They lived their lives working, playing, and enjoying what they had around them. Their disappearance has brought up many theories, but even today we have no explanation for this event. The mystery still lives on and over the years, many different theories have been put forward to try and explain their disappearance. Recently, these images have been released of a giant squid, and researchers say the creature was seen rising from the depths of the Gulf of Mexico. This happened on the 19th of June, and scientists are excited as this is the first time a giant squid has been filmed in US waters. The research team was able to get the footage using state-of-the-art equipment known as Medusa. This allowed them to photograph the creature in pitch black water. The squid came to the device the team had laid out, and tried to eat it. However, when it was unable to do so, the creature returned to the depths. The creature was captured by the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, as they were studying creatures in this region. The photographs were taken at a depth of over 3,200 feet, or 1,000 meters below the surface. It's been estimated the squid was only around 3 to 4 meters, or 10 to 12 feet in length. Researchers are almost certain the creature is in fact the elusive giant squid, and this research has told them these creatures might in fact be attracted to light. Over the years, people have allegedly encountered much larger specimens than this, it's known that the giant squid can reach a massive size. Researchers believe it's able to get up to 30 meters or 43 feet, with the females being a little shorter. However, some believe there's some monster squids lurking in the depths. Some have come forward and said they've encountered squids over 50 feet, and this is why we have folklore stories about them. There's even one story of a giant squid measuring 53 meters long. This was spotted off the Maldives. The man who encountered this beast was known as J.D. Starkey. He was standing close to the deck when he could see something close to the water surface. After looking at it for a few minutes, he decided to go over and investigate. He said the following about what he saw. A circle of green light glowed in my area of illumination. This green unwinking orb I suddenly realized was an eye. Gradually, I realized I was gazing almost point blank at a huge squid. He then went on to say he tried to get an estimate of its size. According to him, he walked up the entire length of the ship, 
and found the squid's head and tentacles at opposite ends. Incredibly, this would have meant the creature was over 170 feet in length. As you can imagine, this story has been met with some scepticism, and some say the creature was nowhere near their size, saying the water could have been giving off a distorted image. Since ancient times, humans have been looking up to the night sky for answers. The vastness of space has left it to be one of the last unexplainable frontiers of the human race. With it has also come a wide number of strange and mysterious properties that even the most well-versed experts on the matter can't explain. Such phenomena include strange signals, unexplained behaviours of stars, and that of strange radiation far out in the reach of humanity. Over the years, some of the best minds have tried to explain these mysteries, but many of them to this day remain unsolved. Recently, NASA scientists have come forward and said that strange flashes can be seen on the moon's surface. As you can imagine, this has brought up all kinds of theories. Explanations so far range from strange aerial phenomena to UFOs. This news comes not long after it was announced that our moon is shaking. Scientists have said that their studies have shown that the inside of the moon has shriveled up, and that deep cliffs can be found all over its surface. What's interesting is that this recent study suggests that the moon could still be shrinking. The researchers have also come forward and said that the moon's surface crust is brittle, and that due to the moon shrinking it's starting to break the surface. However, according to researchers, these lights have been puzzling scientists for years. This isn't the first time they've been seen, but as of right now, they're not sure what the lights are or where they're coming from. It's been said though that a newly developed telescope may be able to give us the answers. Incredibly, these flashing lights have been recorded since the 18th century, and going back then they called them the dancing lights. Astronomers have even reported that other areas of the moon have been seen glowing different colours such as red. Astronaut Michael Collins said the following about the lights. There is an area that is much more illuminated than the surrounding area. It seems to have a slight amount of fluorescence to it. A crater can be seen and the area around the crater is quite bright. As of right now, scientists have suggested that it could be something known as a lunar transient phenomena. This is when a colour change happens on the surface of the moon, and usually for a short amount of time. Regardless, researchers will be carrying out an in-depth analysis of the lines. Earth has often been referred to as the blue planet. This is because over 70% of the Earth's surface is covered in water. However, there is still a lot more to be learned by scanning the ocean depths, and trying to understand the many peculiar discoveries we make about our oceans every single day. Recently, researchers have been carrying out tests in the Gulf of Oman, which is located in the Arabian Sea. This massive stretch of water makes up over 64,000 square miles of water, and it's thought to measure over 2.2 miles at its deepest point. It's also not a safe place to carry out research, is constantly being used by large ships to transport goods and oils from the Persian Gulf. Another issue with this area is that the waters are known for their piracy, making it even harder to carry out tests in this region. Due to this and its depth, scientists have struggled to find out information on the area. However, technology has helped them out. They've been able to send down underwater robots to help them get an idea of what's going on beneath the waves. These robots are known as sea gliders, and they allow the scientists to control them from the safety of their bones. These incredible pieces of equipment can reach depths of over 3,000 feet, and can stay in the water much longer than humans. While scanning the depths, these robots picked up on something that sparked the scientists' interest. Incredibly, they were down there for almost eight months, and were able to collect important data on the region. They soon received news that the oxygen levels in the area were being depleted, and this was happening at an extremely fast rate. Incredibly, this data showed that an area the size of Scotland had consistently low levels of oxygen. Over 63,000 square miles were nearly depleted of oxygen. Scientists described it as a dead zone. These enormous areas give researchers a look into the environmental health. Large amounts of bacteria deplete the water of oxygen, meaning that fish and other marine creatures are unable to survive and live in these zones. This has been happening all over the world, 
And another place that scientists are worried about is the large algae blooms in the Baltic Sea. The last few years have been showing that the Baltic Sea experiences the lowest oxygen levels ever seen in the area. One of the primary causes for this is human-caused pollution and sewage. It's been decades that we've been spilling all of this into the oceans. It's believed that warm waters might be less effective at holding oxygen, which also makes a lot of sense, considering our climate change has raised the water temperatures of our oceans. Found among the dense vegetations are hidden worlds of complex structures and more hidden artifacts and civilizations than anywhere else in the world. This means that millions of undiscovered strange artifacts have been lost to history all throughout the world's dense jungles and forests. However, a number of these have been discovered by researchers. The Olmecs are known to be the first major civilization in Mexico. They appeared around 1600 BCE. They were actually the first people who figured out how to turn latex of the rubber tree into something that can be easily shamed. The Olmec culture had a huge influence on many later civilizations. For example, the Maya. This society was known for their massive stone heads that they carved from basalt, a volcanic rock. There are not many things that have been written about the Olmec, but from the archaeological evidence we have today it seems they were not very economically confined. The Olmec were defined by their specific art style. They were able to craft with various materials such as clay, basalt, jade and even greenstone. Most of their art was made out of green coloured materials, so much of the art found is based on nature. The best pieces of art they've left behind are surely those colossal massive heads. There are 17 massive stone heads that represent human heads. Made out of large boulders, all of these heads date back to at least 900 BCE. The heads that have been found are said to portray Olmec men, all of them having distinct features of their civilization. Not a single head is the same as another. Each of their heads has their own unique headdress representing specific individuals. It's believed the heads are representing the portraits of powerful individuals of the Olmec civilization, but the methods and logic behind how they were transported and carved stays a complete mystery. Additionally, researchers have found a total of 18 large stone head monuments, each one measuring roughly to be 3 metres in height, 3 metres in width and more than 40,000 pounds in weight. Interestingly, it appears the stone heads are impossible to accurately date, and can only be measured by looking at the time in which the large stones were buried to predict the time of their creation. The accepted information from researchers is that the heads were buried during 900 BC, but could predate this time by more than several hundred years in creation. Despite the lack of scientific proof as to their age, researchers have characterised the head as coming from the pre-classic period of the Mesoamerican chronology, dating somewhere close to 1500 to 1000 BC. So what do you guys make of these? And how do you think they were able to create and move them? Let me know your thoughts in the comments. Thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe for more videos.